while I was working on the Oppenheimer video, I had several magical experiences as a result of creating this Woman on the Plane series. And uh, I think it's incredibly powerful in understanding your awakening process, but also as a part of your awakening process. And I noticed this uh, fairly early on when the Woman on the Plane story came out uh, quickly at like after after I realized that it was connected to Barbenheimer I think revealing these hidden messages does trigger an awakening within you it ought to result in an inner epiphany and it opens your inner eye to another level of perception in the process you raise up the levels of ascension on Jacob's ladder within you and it should manifest outside of you in a celebration in the form of street theater or massive synchronicities to show where you are in the process. And that's what I'm sharing with you in this video. The Kundalini awakening happens on every plane of existence. It isn't, if it hasn't worked for you, then you need to look deeper and pay closer attention to what these events and movies are showing you. Now understand, you can receive these levels of awakening in different ways. So it doesn't have to be through decoding events or news stories or movies or anything. But this is a very powerful way of unlocking these levels of perception and going through the Kundalini awakening process on this level. This video is made possible thanks to the generous support of True Love members. If you'd like to become a member, visit truelove.com membership to access additional content. In the process of making the video regarding Tiffany Gomez, I went with I went within for more information, and I intuitively knew that there was something special about her story, just as I knew that Johnny Depp was addressing me directly during the trial. And I know that can sound very strange to people who don't understand what I'm talking about, but this world is an extension of us, so. It's as within, so without. So if I'm trying to reach myself through someone externally, then it's going to, the more you're awake to what's going on here, you're going to notice these things as if they're speaking directly to you, which they are. Tiffany is me. Her story is my story. So in recognizing this, I could see there was a much deeper message for me in seeing it this way. This was source showing me what I must do. Going from one world to the other, merging her divine feminine with her shadow self, and then appearing in the baggage carousel without any luggage in order to exit. But I didn't fully understand what was meant by this until this week. Following this was Tom Cowling's story, in which I realized that the story, his story, was matching the story of someone else I knew. I won't mention who, but... Uh, I did speak to this person and I wasn't sure how he was going to take the message because I didn't know where he was in his ascension process and if he wasn't at the right place he wasn't going to be able to receive the message properly it would be you he would have received it in a very negative way and thought that there was nothing to it but fortunately he received it completely which was great because we had a very powerful shared connection in this discussion and we could see how our personal stories were overlapping much in the same way as Tiffany's story and the Tom Cowling story were overlapping. And I'm telling you this so that you can see these sorts of things in your own life. We couldn't have had this conversation before this precise moment. I needed to have certain experiences that I had in making these videos in order to see what I saw. And he needed to have certain experiences in order for him to grasp on what I was sharing for him to accept it as true. Both of us realize that every single detail in our lives is, di is divinely orchestrated in perfect time and there's literally nothing for us to do. And what I mean by do is effort. So. Everything just unfolds naturally and all you have to do is follow inspired action. So when, whenever we act, we act from divine inspiration. We choose or decide what it is we want and then the rest is laid out for us and we simply follow along. 
This is why it might feel as though we say things we never intended to say or, or our attention is taken in a direction we never really intended. This is just the script playing out. So you choose from an existing scenario and then the universe just lays it out for you and you just follow along. And while you're in it, <laughs> it's really next to impossible to see it, but I'm getting there. So um, hopefully it gets easier to, to trust and to see these sorts of things because uh, Right now, it's still a little tricky. Now, during a live chat, a live chat session, I mentioned that I had seen Donnie Darko, and I paused as I came to a realization in that moment that I mentioned it. In the film, a plane engine falls on Donnie's house, which triggers this entire event for him in the form of a parallel universe. And this again is very similar to Back to the Future, where he goes to bed and then he's aw awakened by Doc and he has this experience. So Donnie Darko's in bed and he has this plane fall on his house. Creates a parallel universe. Back to the future, Marty goes into a parallel universe and he travels back in time. Same with Barbie. She's in bed, she's going to sleep, she has uh, irrepressible thoughts of death and she wakes up in another reality. So this is all meditation. This is all delta. So when you are in a meditative state, close to sleep, this is what happens. At the end of the film, the engine falls on him and he dies in his bed, ending the parallel universe and his own life. The plane engine, just like the story of Tom and Tiffany, or TNT, is represented by the two planes coming together. Tom's last name was Cowling, which means hood, and the covering for a plane engine, which is exactly the same part of the plane that fell on Donnie Darko's house. Even watching that film had to happen exactly when it did in order for me to make that connection. The story of the two planes colliding as parallel universes was shown in Don't Worry Darling, with the red plane penetrating the atmosphere of the simulation. It represented the red plane of existence or the red sky world that existed outside the simulation and Alice was starting to see cracks in her reality at the same time. Don't Worry Darling is very similar to Barbie. Both stories show two worlds coming together, one red, the other blue, or male dominated and the other female dominated. In Barbie, Barbie chooses to manifest in the real world as human. It's interesting that she didn't have to be born into the world, she merely manifested. This perpetuated the reincarnation loop. In Don't Worry Darling, Alice exited out of the simulation and we're not privy to where she went after that. It was assumed that she woke up next to her dead husband chained to the bed, but we also saw her dancing happily in her living room. As you know, I made a series of videos on Don't Worry Darling and have yet to finish the series with a final video on the whole film, which is to come. Barbie died and reincarnated into the real world, having merged her two selves just like Tiffany Gomez did. This is showing us our reincarnation story beginning to end. While I was making Barbie, I had a very magical experience, some of which I mentioned in the most recent live chat, but I left out some important details which I will share with you now. Initially, I was working on the script for Barbie, and it wasn't flowing. I was being interrupted, my energy was off, my cat was getting into the act, and so I knew that this wasn't the way to go. I took, I could sense there was a better, more creative way to tell the story, so I went for a walk to clear my head, and ins an inspiration struck me. Tell the one story that's hidden beneath. The first few lines of the script came to me, and I held, in, I held it in until I got home to my computer. When I got to my computer, it just spilled out of me, and I wrote the script in, I think, an hour. I had a lot of fun making this video, and every step of the way, I was led to add more details. I thought it was done. But there was one more thing that I wanted to add, because when I was watching it back, I realized that I had missed one of the most obvious things, and that was Mattel. Mattel means Matt. M, mother, TT, T and T, which is the Zeus Canal, the gap between, and then L, the man on the bottom. So this was like the, this just encapsulated the entire meaning of the film in one word.
So while I was making the Barbie video, I had this sort of elusive feeling that I was seeing into another world or seeing through the veil on another level. Making this video was such a divine experience. I really felt like I was honored to be part of it and honored to witness it, which was also why it brought me to tears. Uh, it had flowed through me and I was conscious of every detail, but it really felt like I hadn't even made it myself. It was just done already. But I've had this experience before making videos and there, but there was definitely something special about Barbie. So I also want to add here a meditation experience that I had that's connected to all of this. Um, I forget when I had it, but it was recent and I saw a door. So I'm meditating. So I see a door in my, you know, my mind's eye. And I stepped through it. And when I stepped through it, um, I saw my whole life on the other side. This was kind of like what I saw when I meditated and saw the entirety of the universe. And there was a, a like a shield or a veil or the, you know, a screen on this side. But instead of the screen and the golden light, I, I was um, kind of in darkness on this side looking at the screen with my life being projected on it. And I could see all my life, like as it is happening, well, not in the present moment because I was just meditating, but kind of like overlooking, kind of like when Barbie was standing on her rooftop overlooking her town, only not in it, on the outside of it. And I could see and feel how this whole world is just a story, a movie, and I chose, I could choose the movie I wanted to be in. So I played around with it at the time. I chose a movie where I had married my high school boyfriend. So I played that out and I thought, well, that's a pretty good story. Why couldn't I have that story? <laughs> and I even woke up. like. Both of us woke up. So I was like, well, why couldn't I have that story? He's like, well, because you needed to experience the things that you did in this life in order to be where you are now. And so then I had a look at another story with a, another ex-boyfriend and that one didn't turn out so well. So it was, it was just interesting to see what uh, other possibilities there were. While I was in this meditation, um, I asked for more information, more truth, and I started to get connections. I was getting connections to all of the movies and TV shows that show the veil. So the Truman Show, Free Guy, um, Alice in Wonderland, The Looking, uh, Labyrinth, all of those films, they just sort of started connecting. It's a visceral feeling when I make these connections. So it's, it can be very painful. So I came out of this meditation knowing that there was more to this. I, I would, this wasn't finished. But it was too much to receive all at once. Okay, so what I didn't expect from the fallout of Barbenheimer was the heat around the sexes, the battle of the sexes the fighting between defending patriarchy or matriarchy. Since our worlds are separated due to the divided heart, the reunion of the heart has to purge the toxicity on both sides in order for it to die off. I've seen this manifest on the screen as we're seeing more celebrities being attacked for past sexual behavior and both men and women are getting crucified in the public for their toxicity. One example is the Netflix show Love is Blind. This season is particularly toxic and if you've watched my uh the key video there was there was an excerpt in there from love is blind showing you that it's a mirror of our world or a microcosm of our world men are on one side women on the other side and they're split by a wall so they can't see each other none of the couples are able to come together in love because their toxic traits are spilling over in abundance on this season. There's also the awareness of narcissism right now, which I've talked about on my channel. This self and this self-centered focus that creates this us versus them mentality is dying. This is also presented 
as the masculine because our world is the toxic male dominant and the rise of the divine feminine is challenging the existence of the ego or the masculine so it's fighting back it's fighting for its life and this is why barbenheimer upset the patriarchy you've been watching my videos i have kind of detached from the idea of having um physical things and wanting physical things and not really caring so much about it however in the process of you know all of this i've realized that we are here to enjoy the physical we're not supposed to just not do anything here and not enjoy being here we have a purpose to fulfill and we are supposed to tap into our abundance which is what the elite are showing us because they are the ones with all the money and we're the ones at the bottom of the pyramid slaving away for minor ducats so how can we believe that our spiritual ascension path is supposed to lead to being poor that doesn't make any sense i do also want to make note that it's not about accumulating stuff when i mean enjoying your abundance it's understanding that you are everything and knowing your true power it's not about focusing on the physical and needing physical things it's not about accumulating stuff it's not about reattaching to the physical it's about understanding that the physical is temporary and that it can manifest in however you want whatever forms that you want when you get to this point if you are on the ascension path and it's important to you then do not get stuck in the physical do not get drawn in and lured in by the physical things understand that they are there to show you things to assist you to enjoy life but you do not want to get attached to the things which i find is still a lure with these law of assumption law of attraction channels hyper focusing on your reality and your experience which is why going this route on its own is incomplete it will keep you stuck in the 3d it will keep you stuck in this material reality it's part of it and it's a piece of the puzzle but it's not the whole puzzle yes the way that the external um, show displays wealth is like this sort of aspirational get on the hamster wheel a perpetual chase which is not the way to go about it so it's all about the mind and they don't tell us that well they do but you have to find it and you have to dig for it but this was just the start of a massive street theater event so this was very similar to my crowning event my 88 gate event um, getting on the twin pillars event and then the next day which was October 4th, Wednesday, October 4th. And this was the day of this dreaded emergency alert testing for the United States. And Wednesday is Mercury or Odin day, which is also tied to Oppenheimer, Prometheus, Mercury. So I was led to a video by this uh, channel, Be Something Wonderful, I've talked about him a few times, and he talks about law of assumption. Just before I watched it, I had this question, how do I move my desire from being in the future to now? And this video that I clicked on answered it. Then I watched a second video of his and it had a message in it that clicked for me. It was the parable of the rich man and the camel in the Bible. The parable is that the rich man asks Jesus, I have done everything you asked. What else must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? Jesus says, give up your belongings and follow me. The rich man refused because he had worked hard for them. And Jesus says it's easier to pass a camel through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So this parable has stuck with me for quite some time because I didn't really understand what it meant. But now I do. Be Something Wonderful really explained it well. He said that the camel can pass through because it leaves behind its baggage whereas the rich man is not willing not willing to let go of his i realized in that moment that the reason i was reluctant to receive my abundance was because i was holding on to the valuables i had accumulated on my journey but they weren't physical valuables they were intangible val valuables 
I valued my alone time, the truth, gnosis, the lifestyle I had, the ability to do whatever I want whenever I want, my freedom. These were things I wasn't willing to give up and because I was holding on to them, I assumed that adding would take those from me. It then dawned on me that I could have both and that holding on to these rich man things, I was limiting my abundance. What if allowed me to have those things and more? Or what if I don't want those things anymore because everything is 10 times or 100 times or 1,000 times better? So suddenly all these blocks I had were released. They were all gone. And I realized that, duh, I was holding on to this stuff out of fear. And this is a kind of fear that's invisible. You don't even recognize that it's fear. If this is entering into the kingdom, then this is just like in Maui when Jonathan Herzog drove to the kingdom parking lot, which would be the kingdom of God. Being in the kingdom, he was free. And this is what frees us from the limitations of the physical. When you let go of those limitations, the world outside of you changes. Because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I turned that around and I was able to see that I could have whatever I wanted. It's my choice. No one else gets to determine for me what my life must be like but me. I mean, it sounds kind of obvious, but it's these simple things that we do automatically as a result of things that happen to us. And we collect all of these experiences in life and we make negative associations due to past relationships or experiences. And then we decide, I never want to have that experience again. And then we sort of stash it aside and forget about it. And so we accumulate all these things that we don't want to experience again. And because they're negative, we have a stronger emotional association to those things. And we don't kind of alchemize them and say, what was the good that came out of it? And how do we transform it into something useful, that something that we want? Instead, it's like, I got hurt. I got scared. I don't want those things to happen to me. So I'm going to build up this wall of resistance against those things. And then we keep manifesting those things and wonder why. Because we forgot that that's there in the first place. So this is what is meant by dropping the baggage so we can pass through the eye of the needle into the kingdom. This is also what was symbolized by Tiffany Gomez appearing in the airport baggage claim with no baggage. And there was no baggage on the carousels either. This does not mean we cannot or should not be rich. Jesus said the Father wants to give you the gifts of the kingdom. And we are the ones who prevent us from having the gifts of the kingdom. But for me, it was more like seeing it already because it already existed. I could see it. I could visualize it. It was very vivid, but now I was kind of shaping it, making it more real, and in essence, bringing it closer to me. So that night I made peace with my shadow self. I was merging the two sides of myself, just like Tiffany Gomez did, just like Barbie did. I set the intention that I would wake up in the morning in my new life story. And when I woke up, I didn't feel any different. <laughs> Which was really disappointing, but I saw an ad on a video. And the video said, the universe brings you whatever you dream of. And I thought, okay, this is kind of a clue, right? And then I was looking out the window and the sun was coming up. And the clouds were pink and the sky was blue. So I thought, okay, is this evidence of merging the two worlds, the pink and the blue, the red and the blue? I continued working on Oppenheimer and was interrupted by a comment on my Maui video, which I knew to be a troll. And he tried to convince me that I was on the wrong path and I needed to find Jesus. So I called a friend of mine to talk about it, among other things. And while we spoke, there was a sharp bolt of lightning followed quickly by the loudest crack of thunder I've ever heard in my life. It was so loud that it shook my apartment building. We knew that this was street theater and we started putting the pieces together. We knew this was the Kundalini connection. So this is the finger of God touching the finger of Adam. And this connection I had within was on October 4th, 10-4. The time on the clock in Back to the Future when this event happens. When the lightning strikes. So lightning happened for me on the 5th. 
So the Jesus comment is connected to Jesus showing up before you pass through the gate. Don't look back. So the movie on the theater and Back to the Future, when uh, Marty goes through the theater, Back to the Future, is called The Atomic Kid. On the other side, when he gets back to the future, it's Jesus Saves or something on the theater. So that's another connection. Here's another level to Back to the Future. So when Marty goes back in time, he goes back to the past, to the dreamland, while he's dreaming in meditation. He changes his past, his parents, he gets them to unite in love so that it changes the course of his life so that when he wakes up or returns back to the future, he has a whole new life. He has his dream life. This is what I am talking about, this whole experience right now. Then on Friday, I heard three songs on the radio. The Strange Advance song played again. And this was really odd because twice in one week I hear this song when I have not heard the song since the 90s. It was one of my favorite bands at the time. The second song I heard was Heaven is a Place on Earth, Belinda Carlisle. The third song was Song in My Head, Martha and the, Martha and the Muffins, which is an obscure 80s Canadian pop group. All these three songs had lyrics about two coming together as one and also dancing under the stars with a song in the head. In Barbie, she's dancing under the stars, the disco ball with a song in her head. You would think after this I wouldn't have any doubts about stepping into my new life, but I did have a few creep up. I thought things like, well, I should prepare myself. Uh, I have these things I want to change. And I said, no. <laughs> if there's things that need to be modified, then those will just naturally go away. Sunday morning, I went to the grocery store. I told you this in the live chat, and this experience is relevant because I've been gradually seeing the world differently. And when I stepped inside the grocery store, it was busy. And this usually drives me nuts. I don't like crowds. I don't like it when it's busy. So I set the intention that by the time I got to the register, there'd be nobody there. And in the store, I decided there's nobody in the store. So I repeated to myself, there's nobody here, there's nobody here, there's nobody here. Because I knew that if there's too many people and they start bumping into me, I'm going to get annoyed. So I just repeated, there's nobody here, there's nobody here. So I started to have the experience that there was nobody there. Nobody bothered me. But that didn't remove the people. The people were, were still there. They just didn't affect me. And this was significant because it showed me that no matter what the external looks like, we have the power to see it any way we choose. And it changes our experience with it. Just because it was full of people doesn't mean I have to contend with the people. I decided that it, there was nobody there, so those people didn't bother me. If, if, if I hadn't decided that, those people might have bothered me. I might have focused intently on all of the people and it started annoying me. So another thing that happened in the store was I needed cat litter and when I was looking at the shelf, all of them were scented and I can't stand the scented ones. And so I almost walked away and I said, no, I'm going to manifest one. All I need is one. There's got to be one in the shelf. So I moved a few around and in the back was one unscented and I picked it up and put it on in my, in my cart. So when I got to the register, there was nobody there. I was first to be served. So I manifested that there was no one waiting in line. There was no big line. So this experience taught me that there's many ways to look at things. And the ultimate way to look at things is to completely ignore reality. So don't concern yourself with what the physical presents. And it doesn't have to actually go away. It's how you interact with it. You can have somebody to your face yelling at you and completely disengage and say this isn't even happening and it doesn't affect you. 
That person's still there. The person's still yapping at you, but you don't engage and you don't do anything about it because to you, it's not happening. What I realized too is that my dream life already exists. It's right there and all I need to do is step into it because I am. And what Be Something Wonderful teaches isn't about attracting something outside of yourself. It's about realizing who you are and who you are is God. Who you are is consciousness. I am. And I am is taking claim of the things that you want in life and deciding that it's going to be a certain way. So there's no need to settle for anything less. Okay, so the other side of this is if you can do this sort of thing where you completely ignore reality, what does this mean for seeing truth from the physical? Does this affect what you can extract from the physical experience? from all of the videos that I show you, all of this stuff is revealing coded messages and everything, that doesn't change. Because there's only one story. So the only thing that changes is your perception of the story. And the story is running undercurrent and how you interact with it is what happens on the surface. There's all the many permutations of that story, but the main story runs underneath it like a silent river. What we need to realize too is that the external doesn't control us. We control it. It has no power over you. Unless you let it. All things are created. They're already done. And the story hasn't changed. It will never change. It's only one story. Your story doesn't change, but you get to choose how you experience it because your perception is what changes your experience. We live in a dream, so dream a better dream. Thanks for listening. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.